For the past few days, I accidentally heard Mary Beth going around asking the rest of the mates about Kira, who's been missing from unusually long time. By the way, I found it interesting that she started to search about him after I noticed his absence in real life. I mean not in real life, well, I mean he really is missing in my real life because he is obviously a fictional character and I believe I am still living in a reality, but I mean, I was wondering what happened with him because I think I haven't seen him dead, so yes, where is Kieran? Also, my horse needs to be fed more regularly and now I'm doing his job instead because he might be laying dead somewhere without telling us. Very neglectful, I would say. At least tell somebody so we can find someone else to do your job, gosh. I was just about to pet my satiny blue horse when we were rudely interrupted by the Snow Black searching me for advice about her friend as being a very bad alcoholic and she is scared about her. Of course, she well knows who to ask about drinking. Remember, always search advice from proficient people. After I promise her... I'll try to. But we both know it won't work. We both know it won't work. Why did you came here spooking my horse with your questions about people's daily routines and after I did my best to help you say, yeah, but it won't work. I went to relieve the severe job caused out by that gambaldo. I suppose we can all admit for him being both scared by her inappropriate behavior and cringing at the same time, which makes the poor animal run like crazy, but blind as well. Just go away from there, lady, don't you see your freaking him out? It's, there's no joke, I tell you, people really can go blind after short but ridiculous enough conversations. She has no mercy. And please don't discriminate my horse, he is people too. While reassuring him, I attend to hear Pearson's story in response to Mary Beth for our missing friend. Snow Black and I look at each other after hearing this dialogue asking ourselves, did she really? I hope my horse will quickly recover after witnessing all of that. I step in the bizarre collision to calm down the young lady and tell her that's all good. Except Pearson, but let's just not say anything about it. I come back to Sadie who was sitting alone cleaning her weapon as she usually does in her free time. This is her way to meditate, dreaming for the moment he, how she shoots in the face the man who killed her husband and let the Driscolls inside her house which eventually was burned to the ground on account of our assistance. By the way, the matching outfits we both wear at this moment is pure coincidence. I swear I didn't think that we're going even going to have a mission together. And matching garments isn't required to start a good flirt, the size of your gun is. And looks like she's holding the bigger one, so I can just hope she stays peaceful while I'm around. A moment later Dutch comes to speak with me and I feel rudely interrupted for a second time today. I think we can hit it. I ain't never robbed in a city before. Well, you leave While we are planning our next move, a robbery of course, I start to feel as a very important person because the human ego is something that needs a regular care. And then this happens. What is that? 
Uh, wow, this lady changed her whole outfit so quickly she deserves a Nobel Prize. But the important thing here is that I was just rudely interrupted for a third time today and this needs to be fixed with a high level of testosterone and a revolver in hand. Dutchu rudely strikes me over the stairs as someone who still hadn't his daily ego character, but I directly jump on the battlefield like a real athlete and start shooting people for the sport. I spot a wagon with reinforcements coming and I quickly decide to steal, I mean say, one of the horses. And I really love the way how those two are just chilling on the backside like they are going on a vacation. And they'll get some definitely unforgettable one, or rather I say forgettable because I'll send them to death. I just saved TripAdvisor from an out of aggressive feedback. You are welcome. I hop out of my cover to take the horse and instantly get shot so I reset. After the order, I remember his impolite behavior from the last time, so I go while thinking about what a Caesar he is, keeping himself safe while watching the battle from above. And then I realized that actually it was his way for ego care at that moment, so I start to swear over the disco because you know how people act rude to other people because someone treated them rude lately? Dutch? I ask is everyone okay and they say yes, it's all butterflies and flowers. Why are you asking? The moment with the wagon is here and I notice that every time when the wagon comes closer something mysteriously happens with one of the horses. Therefore, I assume that in order to kill the guy in the wagon, my mates are actually shooting over the horse. With this level of accuracy, I don't know how any of them is still alive. As some kind of weird joke, I always fail. I hope it wasn't their job because this makes them not only bad in shooting, but with awful humor too. Now we will have another go as well, saving both horses. One more time, I go sprinting like a cheetah. I just don't get why during this mission you can't run faster or jump through the stairs. Is there a safety measures contract Tartar signed for work? For a second time, Dutch outside running with the women. So he can jump from the second floor? Of course he can, he is a leader. And leaders are capable to do everything, even using a single use consumables twice or more. People call that double standards. The wagon is here and I managed to kill all the chimps on it so my idiot friends don't shoot over the horses and I successfully saved them. But seconds later I couldn't save myself. Okay, again I restart and when I turn back I see how hard Dutch is working. Clearly don't see him with ammunition left before we are done. Go through the doors, you can see the actual scenario here, without Dutch running around, I mean. John's call feels like New Year's holiday candy. I jump to take the horse and you know how making money by selling them makes me feel great. And then I fall down for once again. These guys are really breaking my business. This time I felt a bit more successful, but for some reason I pointlessly start searching for a tonic in my bag like a lady never finding whatsoever inside, so inevitably follow along with the horse and then he gives it back to me by pushing me back down. I would never think that falling on the ground is equivalent with death. 
At least I saved the horses. I see Dutch hardworking again. Go outside. Kill a bunch of Zanis. And then take the horse. And I finally did it. And so I run to hide him somewhere safety so I can take him after the party. Of course it won't be me if there is no go and try to achieve and I found out later it's an absolute waste of time. So yeah, here we are again, this time with another tactics. I throw my goals away, saving horses doesn't save the planet, so firstly I have to survive. In the course of being brave and good looking I feel a bit thirsty, so I search for my bag in for my bourbon and I got shot. Didn't they ever heard to do not disturb when a person is drinking? One more time, I save the horses. Saving life makes me feel like a god so as a result of the adrenaline I proceed to kill that guy who was just having a heart attack. That's not making me a bad person, it's called strategic. Ten tries later I realize that I have to go back inside. I leap like a tiger, passing through the rail of bullets coming from all my sides and after all so far, this guy hits me over the head with his shotgun. Such an embarrassment, I reasonably thought my death failed the mission. Not so fast, I didn't went inside shady belly. Of course, I start from all over the beginning, but I think watching it already 10 times is enough. Finally I reach the point to get inside and I see that move Arthur makes which I'm not sure exactly is that goosebumps or he takes position to play on the piano that's in front. Or the excitement provokes a dance move. Everyone has at least one not to be made public dance move which in occasion of hormone explosion may involuntarily spring out. It's almost identical when you and your when your golden retriever is impatiently waving tail with his tongue out the moment you open the front door, or equivalent when you and your significant other have to spend a long time separated and you finally meet in the train station, then you pull out your shotgun and shoot her. We take position to protect our place and then I hear Sadie screaming from outside. So I run to save her. And they know how quick she was, killing three at once. I told you, provoking her is a bad idea. I love that part. Arthur carries her as a small kitty that needs prote protection but she comes out as a cruel tiger. Did you feel the scary worrying man being both surprised by her abilities god know where she got from? Arthur and Sadie are having their first time together. And again, I really didn't notice the similarity of our outfits before, but I find it very symbolic in this profound moment. Cute isn't it? We continue fighting the enemy and we even had that special slow motion frame together. I'm giving it to Sadie. It wasn't orchestrated by a rockstar, that's the moment when you're subscribed because you see how artistic I am. And also I like how she's mobilizing us like a real combat mastermind. And we have to admit that she renders a large part of the atmosphere thanks to that she's a woman, especially when we know how she was just a regular, peacefully living wife that had never experienced such a business. Just look at her. So reliant. And I successfully take them all down. I wonder should I leave my most successful try for the end, but I made it that way. We can't know what the future had prepared for us. We'll have a few more moments. In this part I'm already striking to save Sadie. I quickly have one shark cam before I go outside and thankfully John reminds me what to do because I wasn't the one who suggested. Two steps out and I say, hold on, 
Let me just loot here a little bit. And as you see, I do my best with the rapid reflex to take this one down. And can you feel how seriously Arthur sounds when calling Sadie to go inside this time? And did you saw Sadie just looted this guy? What did you took from him, Sadie? I did the same after her and I found more stuff than the number of his pockets. Anyway, if her reaction depends on my actions right now, I would say her response is absolutely on place. We are not repeating scenes, this is a mirage. And by the way, did anyone notice the speed that John is doing everything with? I really want to know what is the model of his controller because he's just smashing. That is talking to you like a girl who's keeping eye on you and giving comments from a mysterious place you can't see. He's the kind of a leader who participates actively during every job he suggests when his people need protection but also he'll take a time to rest whenever he wants and tell you what to do meanwhile. In the rest of the time, you're free to do whatever you want since nobody is in danger. Here you see me trying to go outside before Sadie's call and seems like my game glitches and made to discos feel like some of those ducks or the flying plates you shoot over with a plastic pistol. Then John starts to swear over us for keeping Karen in the gang and after having a little bit more time inside this time Arthur makes a good reply back. Sadie sends the await notification, so I run for it and then the door appears to be open. The realm I live in appears to be surprisingly accurate and witchcraft often at times is also available but it doesn't mean what we don't see or understand is always the case. Not all of us are Christians after all. Dutch are you jumping from your hideout again? It's not fun in the middle of a book bath. Uh, well, you, Few times I had that glitch, it feels like the house is burning during nighttime. Well, after failing the mission 10 times, I think it's normal to start giving some bugs here and there. So, after we did that deja vu kind of trip so far, let's pass through the whole job in one brit altogether. And let me promise something very unusual here. I'll try to speak less this time. Then everybody in the room looks at each other, part of whom confused, some are wondering if this is possible. Is Alex trying to, ex to exercise something new? The rest are looking back to those who wonder with kind of a promising weather reassuring then there's no doubt, it's just not happening. Excuse me, but I could not slip in Arthur's reaction here. Did you really tell Dutch is going to hit you? Just watch at him. I think this is what they call the post traumatic stress. Sadie, I gotta go help her. Cover me. 
I have to say it to assure her that I'm coming and have you stops to search around the bodies for some coins, something is expensive to sell, maybe a few bottles of whiskey. We are working people here, payment is required. From my past tries I know it's better to save my energy here. And I just wait for him to fall dead before looting him. Why didn't you get inside? <laughs> and miss all this? Come on, Arthur. Yeah. Oh, we go back. We need you in the house, Mrs. Arthur. Sadie is yelling over me while I'm practicing my new clutch. It's okay Sadie, you're waving pistols around showing how tough you are. Just take a decision. But anyway, I'm here Sadie, I'm here just to load a few more bodies again. I'm definitely behind your back. I run along and continue helping this cute paroxysm of rage and after my next source of passing income she asks Well yes, I can't tolerate those idiots, this is it. Shooting around constantly, especially while I'm searching their friends bodies, my anger says it's worth, my patience also has its limits. I even was close to shoot over Charles, you know what they say, anger makes people go blind. Anyway, I really like how everybody begins to call everyone's name right there. Cowards! We okay? I think so. Except for Karen here. Uh, poor kid. Mr. Swanson, could you take this boy and bury him someplace near, but not too near? Of course. Charles. Help me with the box. We need to get this place cleaned up. Mr. Pearson, Miss Grimshaw. Already taking care of it. Come on now, work. Como Driscoll. That man can really hate. So can I, Arthur. So can I. We need to get moving. Away from here. So we should start looking for another camp. You ain't thinking big enough, Arthur. You ain't seeing the vastness of our problems and our opportunities. I'm not sure I get you. You will, son. You will. Meet me near the trolley station. We got work. Shall we? Yep. Adler fought braver than any of us. She is driven by powerful forces I scarcely understand. That's what love has done to her, I guess. Well, that was it. I hope you enjoyed being here with me. As I said a little bit earlier, this isn't the best way to complete the mission, but it also wasn't the point of our experience today. I'm going to upload a clear version of it, much shorter and complete with a gold medal. medal. If I am able to do so, but at least I'll try. Like Buddha said once, it's better to try and fail than never touching the girl next door boobs. You never know the result. So let's now quickly check our gangmates after the unexpected disaster and shall we make an after party? I'll have some gin or whiskey 
They did not even let me to have a single sip during the main part. This is what makes a guest a bad guest. He was such a gentle soul. Yeah, he saved my life one time. I miss him. You make the bastards pay, Arthur. If we get the chance, we surely shall. When I ask are you okay, I didn't mean that Miss Grimshaw, we are in the middle of the swamps, you chill. The atmosphere is specific, everyone is frustrated. We need to start learning from our mistakes. I oh, know. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay, I think there was me thinking we were a step ahead of the O'Driscolls. I was almost starting to like that Kieran. And he saved your life. I know. I hear my horse scared to death from somewhere far away. After all, I just wanted to spend a few minutes with him. And look where he went and all had to witness. You never know what can happen in your next minute. Now you're flirting with your girl and planning robberies around the city. In the next minute, one of your friends comes on the back of a horse with his head holding hands and a whole army of gangs attacks your home and your family. After this brutal turn up of the day, I'm finally here to pet my horse. <laughs> 